Hello, you lovely ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mangus, and I welcome you guys back to Unit Analysis. Today, we are checking out the King of the Sky, the undisputed big gun. One of my favorite units to build in competitive Advanced Wars, the Bomber. The Bomber is a great unit. It adds a level of uncertainty to the late game. It's a very volatile unit, high risk, high reward. They can win you the game, they can cost you the game, depending on uh, how your opponent responds to them. And nothing feels quite as great as cruising a bomber across the sky and taking out one of your opponent's key units in one fell swoop. And if they don't happen to have a response for this thing, it is just straight up GG. The Bomber is a very powerful unit. It kills pretty much anything it touches. However, it is a big investment. It is an expensive unit to build. 22,000 is nothing to scoff at. It's not something you can just pay out in any match. It's a big investment and your opponent needs to respond to it. Now, in Fog of War, the Bomber is a little bit of a gambling unit. It's a uh, it's an ambush fighter, basically. You know, it comes out of the fog, it takes out an important unit, and you're kind of just hoping that your opponent doesn't have an anti already. Now, most good players um, who play competitive Advanced Wars, they will build an anti early on to ward off Battlecopter aggression. So, the chances of your opponent not having an anti already by the time your Bomber enters the field is very low. But it can happen, and I have won games this way. Uh, so I will say that in Fog of War, I actually don't think the Bomber is that strong because your opponent can hide anti in the woods and thus they'll have a very easy counter to the Bomber. But if you play outside of Fog of War, the Bomber actually becomes very strong because you'll always be able to see where your anti or where your opponent's anti are and thus you can maneuver around them. You can go behind rivers, you can go behind mountains and you can always stay out of range of their anti -air. And even better, uh, one of the things uh, I really love about the Bombers is that they actually can destroy Antire quite easily. Their firepower is so high that if they get the first strike against the Antire, they just wipe, wipe them out. And very few places are safe uh, from a Bomber as far as Antire are concerned. I mean, sure, if they're on planes, uh, they won't get wiped out in a single hit, but they'll still get reduced to the point where their damage is practically non-existent. Even hiding Antire in forests isn't really that viable. They still take 76% base damage, which means that they're still so weak, they're not really able to do much. The only place where an Antire is safe from a Bomber is on top of an allied property. They take 66% base damage and they will be repaired up next turn. So this Antire will go up to 5 HP and it will do quite a decent damage back to the Bomber on the next turn. It's a little bit of a luck roll. Sometimes they take 6 damage, sometimes they take 7. It's a little bit reliant on the luck roll. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I think that Antire are not a good response to Bombers. Yeah, sure, they're a lot cheaper and they only cost 8,000, but you need a lot of them in order to actually properly protect you yourself. And if you have some tanks to follow it up, you can take out the enemy's Antire and suddenly your Bombers have free reign. Uh, so, aside from, like, a missile that you hide in the forest, which is not very likely to happen outside of Fog of War, and not really likely to happen in Fog of War either, because missiles are just really bad, the only counter that you have to the bomber is a fighter. And the fighter does wreck the bomber. It one-shots it, uh, it's faster than the bomber, so it's very likely to kill it. But the thing is, the fighter costs 20,000, which is almost as much as the bomber. And what I like about this is that by building the bomber, you are forcing your opponent to take to the skies. You're forcing the battle to transition into an air battle. Once you reach the late game and your income starts to peak above 20,000, you can pretty re realistically uh, force out <laughs> realistically. You can realistically force out a bomber um, from your airport every turn, and your opponent kind of has no choice but to start building fighters themselves to counter your bombers. And then you can build Antire to try and counter their fighters, or you can transition into a, a ground battle again, which forces your opponent to sit there with useless fighters that can't do anything. And if you're playing a, a CO like Eagle or Max that really like bombers, and say you're playing against a CO like Sami, then uh, you can kind of like force Sami to take to the skies, which she does not do particularly well. And that's why I like the bombers, because it only really has one viable counter, and if your opponent doesn't build that counter, well, they're kind of screwed. So you're kind of taking control of the matchup and taking it on your turf, which I like a lot. Now, as for the bombers' basics, as, as you probably know, it is one of the fastest units in the game at 7 move. That is incredibly good. It has an immense range. It threatens a huge area of the screen. Uh, I like bomber. I like bombers because they can respond to threats incredibly quickly. You build them out of the airports, and during the course of the next turn, they're probably already in position to attack. So they can respond incredibly quickly. 
and as a result, uh, they don't take forever to set up, like, for example, a rocket. Uh, they have two visions, so they're not fantastic at scouting in fog, but they can do it. Uh, and they have a very nice supply of fuel and ammo, 9-9 fuel, 9 shots. It's not very likely to go out of uh, supplies. Uh, most likely they will die before that happens. Uh, they do burn 5 fuel per turn, so be careful if you're going up against a CO like Drake. Uh, you should probably have an APC uh, nearby. But most of the time the bomber will uh, die before it can do anything. But that, that's fine. As long as it gets to do some damage before it dies, that's completely okay. And as I said, sometimes you want the bomber out just to force your opponent to spend money on fighters. Uh, I think that this is a completely okay thing to do in competitive advanced wars. Build a bomber, even though it doesn't necessarily get to hit a lot, you're forcing your opponent to build units which they may not want to build. Now, personally, I like building bombers in response to enemy neotanks. I think neotanks, uh, you can try to counter them with neotanks of your own, but I think bombers are probably one of the best counters to neotanks. Same thing with battleships, although you don't really see battleships a lot in competitive advanced wars. Bombers are a very good response to them. Now, let's take a little bit of a look at how the bomber does. I don't know what's going on here. I think I attacked a medium tank before starting the recording. <laughs> but let's take a look at the bomber's damage value, shall we? So, it is 110% damage to infantry units. So even on planes, I do believe they will be wiped out. So if an infantry unit is protecting an important unit in the back, you can use a bomber to wall break the infantry. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but you can do it. Bombers also do as much damage to mechs as they do to infantry, 110%, which is a little bit unusual since the mech tends to take a little bit less damage from most sources. Uh, the bomber does 105% damage to recons. So again, even on planes, they can wall break recons, which is incredibly nice. Um, they do 105% damage against normal tanks. So again, the trend is the bomber can pretty much wipe out any vehicle as long as it's not on a forest. Uh, against medium tanks, it does 95%, which you saw earlier. Uh, they do 90% damage to neo tanks. So neo tanks will always survive a bomber unless you have a calm tower or you're playing a CO like Max. But still, I mean, this is quite devastating. These units cost the same. So if you attack a neo tank with a bomber, the bomber has almost instantly earned itself in. Against the APC, it does 105% damage as well. This seems to be a recurring trend against most vehicles. It seems to do around 105%. Uh, same with artillery, I believe. Yeah, it does 105% damage to artillery. So again, like, the bomber just kills everything you throw it at. It is pretty strong like that. Against the rocket, it also deals 105% damage. So... Uh, again, its damage values are pretty comparable against everything in the game. As we've already seen against the Antire, it deals 95% base damage, so it completely destroys Antire unless the Antire is on property. Of course, if the Antire gets to strike first, then the Bomber will die, and we'll take a look at the Bomber's defenses in a little bit. Against Missiles, it also deals, surprise, surprise, 105% base damage. Um, missiles are not good units, you shouldn't build them unless you want to meme on your opponent. Uh, against submarines, as long as they're not submerged, the bomber deals 95% damage. It's a bit of a coin flip whether it kills it or not. Uh, I do believe it deals the exact same damage to landers. 95%, so again, coin flip whether or not they destroy the units within. This time around, it did not happen. Uh, they also do very well against cruisers, which is kind of laughable considering cruisers are supposed to be untire. They deal 85% base damage to cruisers, so yeah, cruisers are complete sitting ducks as far as bombers are concerned. And they deal 75% damage to battleships. Battleships are actually one of the more resilient units in the game as far as bombers are concerned, but they still get destroyed. Now, as for the bombers' survivability, uh, they take 65% damage from cruisers. This is almost never gonna happen unless the cruiser is hidden in reefs or your opponent is really misplaying. Uh, as we've already seen, the fighter is a perfect counter to the bomber dealing 100% base damage. So unless you're playing a CO like Kumbai or Eagle, your bomber is not going to survive a shot. Uh, missiles do the same damage 100%, although you're almost never gonna see missiles being built in competitive advanced wars. And lastly, the Antire deals 75% base damage. So the Antire can't really properly wipe out a bomber, which is kind of sad considering it's an Antire unit. But yeah, again, the bomber is just a fantastic unit. Uh, I like it a lot. Uh, it has a ton of application. Uh, it's a very volatile unit. I'm assuming some people don't like building it because it's such an all-in, you know? Uh, some people may experience building a bomber, having it shot down, and having it do absolutely nothing. But I personally think that bombers utilized well can really win you matches. Uh, I love building them, especially in high funds on Advanced Wars by Web. They're a lot of fun to use. So many fun things they can do. They're great at wall breaking. They're great at threatening your opponent. If 
uh, transitioning the battle from a ground battle into an air battle is always a lot of fun. I think bombers are just a fantastic unit overall. And in the hands of a seal like Eagle, with his lightning strike, they can absolutely win games. I mean, being able to strike twice with your bombers in a single turn is just criminally good. So what do you guys think about the bomber? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you like building it? Do you hate building it? Well, let me know what you think in the uh, comment section below. And I do believe we are almost done with all the Advanced Force 2 units. So, um, yeah. Um, I think we have the rocket left. Maybe... Oh, and the Neo tank. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you guys in the next series. Enjoy your day, and remember, a bomber a day keeps uh, the Sonya away. <laughs>